Love not the world, neither the things in the world. I mentioned before that we are living in a day and age when we are under attack in our minds, in the body of Christ, and we are losing a war for our sanity because what is the popular thing to preach on Sunday morning is a materialistic gospel that makes you want to love the things of the world. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we talk about uh, a prosperity gospel and prosperity this. And I want to tackle one thing really quick. And, and I may do some more teaching than preaching on today as the Lord um, leads me in this. But I want you to turn to John 10, verse 10. And then we're going to look at that verse there. John, this is the big John, Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. Don't lose your finger in 1 John, chapter 2, though. And John 10, verse 10, Jesus says a very famous statement, the thief cometh but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we understand that the thief definitely represents the devil. And his old modus operandi is to steal, to kill, and destroy. Now, here's an interesting thing here. I'm going to get a little bit deep with you. Can you handle it deep this morning? Are you too tired for deep or can we when we talk about kill, the Greek word for kill is to make a sacrifice. So the purpose of the thief is to kill and to sacrifice and to destroy. And the idea of sacrifice is the idea that the devil is trying to make you a sacrifice for his glory. Mm -hmm. Listen to me right now. It's not that the devil is just trying to kill you like run you over with a car or set a bolt of lightning on you or make you walk in front of a train it's not like that he wants to change your whole agenda to make you a sacrifice for himself the bible says in romans 12 that we are to present our bodies to god as a living sacrifice but the devil wants to change the agenda of god and to turn you around to get you back into the world so that you can be a sacrifice for him the devil always makes the world seem very appealing. There's a lot of things that, are, that, that seem to the human mind very good in the world. We can say that there are things in the world like there's beautiful art and there's poetry, you know, and then there's a, some good movies in the world, some good music in the world. But there is, there is a, a string attached to all of this. Now, now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy any of these things that are in the world that are good, but you ought not love them. Mm. There's always a string attached by the devil when he makes you fall in love with the world. This whole world system still belongs and flows after the pattern of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve gave up dominion and the devil took dominion. And so everything with this world, it has a string attached to it. And what the devil likes to do is, he may get us caught up in some of the good things of the world until they become one of these. An idol. Mm. An idol. I, I know people that are so caught up in the good things of the world. And when you look at it, there's nothing wrong with loving art. Nothing wrong with loving poetry or music or movies. But then they get so caught up that people will sometimes put these things in front of God. And that's what the devil wants, is to turn these things that are in the world into things that give him a lot of glory. To make a sacrifice of you for himself. He'll steal, he'll kill, he'll sacrifice you as an offering to himself and destroy. But Jesus says, in contrast, I came that they might have what? Life. Life, and then what kind of life does he say? Abundant. Abundant. Abundant, okay. Abundant life. Okay. Now here is another thing I want to show you. The Greek word for life is Zoe. Zoe. The Greek word for life is Zoe. And the idea here is, is that you and I were dead, were dead from the time that we were born, spiritually dead, until we met Jesus and became spiritually alive. And he came that we might have life. He came that he might take us as dead vessels and give us life inside of this vessel. But then he says, I came to give it more abundantly. Now this is where many Christians get confused. They think that abundant life consists of abundant money, abundant resources, or abundant glory. God did not come to give you abundant money. He did not come to give you abundant resources. 
He didn't come to give you abundant glory. One thing that we ought to learn as believers is that this life is not about you or I. Our, our, our lives, our self-interest is very, very small in the overall plan of God. God's plan is supreme. We live for one purpose, that we might give glory and honor and praise to our God. So he came to give us life and that more abundantly. And when we have this word abundant here, we are talking about um, above and beyond life is what he's trying to say. I came to give you life and I came to give you above and beyond life. Mm -hmm. In other words, I came to give you spiritual life. I came to give you eternal life. I came to give you a life of an interaction yeah. with God. Yeah. Now that is abundant life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, it would, it would be something if, if God came and he saved us mm -hmm. and he gave us life and then he said, okay, leave me alone. Oh, wow. I've done enough for you. Now, now leave me alone. You're alive. What, what, what more do you want? But God says, I not only came to give you life, a spiritual life, so that you will not die, you know, except for physically. I came to give you abundant life where you can actually have a God that you can call on and tap into. Hmm. A God that you can call on and tap into. Now, if, if the world had a method of gaining access to God, and it required some kind of um, sacrifice of money or, or a great quest, then a lot of rich people would be on their way, climbing the highest mountain, exploring deep caves, trying to find that one thing. Because when you have access to God Almighty, it's greater than anything you ever have before. Amen. But Christ gives it to us freely, and He gives it to us abundantly. Amen. You know, what, what a great idea is this. When Israel had a relationship with God, they could not come to God 24 hours a day and call out to God and get the things they needed for God or to enjoy a relationship with God. They had to go to the priest, the prophet, or the king. But Jesus says, what I'm starting, I'm flipping everything. And I came to give you life, abundant life, and that life is found in me. Now look at the very next verse on that. Jesus talks about the good shepherd. And in the middle of the verse, or near to the end, he says, The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. We're all familiar with that verse, right? Mm -hmm. The good shepherd gives what? His life, his life for the sheep. And if you look at verse 15, it says, I lay down my life. In verse 17, I lay down my life. Now, I want to show you something. You know, um, Jesus gives us this thing called Zoe. And, and Zoe is translated as the word life. And then Jesus says... I'm going to lay down my what? My life. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Now, we think that it's, a, it's an exchange, a one-to-one -one exchange, right? It seems like, you know, he gives us life, he gives away his life. It's a one-to-one -one exchange, but it's not. Because the Greek word that Christ used for life is really the word for soul. It is suke. Hmm. I want you to catch this for a second. Jesus isn't saying the good shepherd gives his Zoe for the sheep. That's a one-to-one -one exchange. The good shepherd gives his soul for the sheep. Mm. Here's the difference on that. This is not this is more than body life. This is the complete total life. This is the complete total self. The good shepherd gives himself completely and freely over to the sheep. Now watch this. The Bible calls us uh, um, servants, okay? We are to be servants or bond slaves. We are to, be, to give our lives completely to God as if, you know, um, we have no rights of our own, okay? Now, this is not very popular to preach in, in, in today's churches. We don't have to hear about being a servant or being a slave. We want to be on victory. We want to be on top. We want to have the devil under our feet. We want to have all kind of prosperity. We want to name it and claim it. We want to use kingdom authority. But in the kingdom, the Bible describes us as servants and slaves to God. Now, this is where it really gets heavy. Because we give our Zoe to God, but God gives us his suke. I want you to really, really catch that. God gives us everything within himself. 
everything within himself God makes available to you you know, uh, uh, as a resource, uh, 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 as a comfort. God is all in it to win it with you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's not unreasonable. I'm going to give you a good illustration on that. You know, let's say that you go to work, right? And that in, in you're, you're working on your job and, and you're in the office, you know, or you're out in the field and somebody pulls a, a gun on you, right? And your, your boss jumps in front of the gun and says, let me give you... Uh, every bit of money I have in my pocket, let me give you my watch, let me give you my shoes, here's the key to my car, and I still want you to kill me so that person can be spared. Mm. Okay? This is a, a total sacrifice where, where, where the one who is greater is esteeming the one who is less, more worthy than himself. Mm. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. That's the love of God. The love of God is so deep that those that are under God, that are not equal to God, God considers them worth more than his own life. He puts his own soul into it that we might receive this life that comes back from this exchange. Thank you, Lord. I came that they might have life and that more abundantly. So now go back to 1 John chapter 2. Because of this great exchange, because you understand the reality and, and how God loves you and how God adores you and how God is willing to put you before Him and all He asks is that you put Him before yourself. You don't hear me on that? Amen. 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 God asks you to put Him before yourself because He puts you before His own self. Yes, wow. Amen. And He asks us, love not the world. Right. Neither the things that's in the world. Amen. I have given myself over to you completely. I have given my soul to you. Mm. I've given my soul to you. The total essence of who I am. My mind, my will, my emotions. I've turned over. I've given to you. Now all I'm asking is that you get rid of, you flee, you separate, you detach from this thing called the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Now, what a, what a great smack in the face of God. What a, a great slap in the face of the Almighty when we fall in love with this world. Mm. You know, we have got to be very careful as believers. You know, love of the world does not happen, you know, instantly. It doesn't happen like instantly. You don't wake up one morning and say, man, I'm in love with the world. <laughs> and I'm in love with the things of the world. Wow, it just happened and took me over. It's a very gradual, gradual change. It starts with you liking something, then you needing something, and then you love that thing. And that word love there is agape, which means that you are not the word, this is the Greek word phili, philio, which means you are not just friendly with the world. You are in total love unconditionally mm. with the world. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You know, so many times we see our brothers and sisters getting shipwrecked, or we may have been shipwrecked, we may be backsliders that have come back to God and say, God, I, I, I fell for the trap of gradually going back into the world. It's an everyday fight that we have. World war me. We are always fighting against this thing called self, yes. this thing called the flesh. Amen. Yes. Our battle with the flesh is total. Because the flesh loves and that word loves is the word agape our flesh loves the world oh our flesh loves the world and so we've got to be on guard to very carefully make sure that when we begin to fall into like with things we don't fall into the needing of those things you know i'll tell you i, I mean i i remember uh, several times i have to fight my wife will tell you also that if I get hooked on a, a real good TV show, I mean, that show was like really good and they got a cliffhanger and I want to know what happens next week and then I miss the show and I'm all upset because <laughs> I've gone from like to gone to needing. Mm -hmm. 
And the next step from like to needing is I've fallen in love with that. And the devil does that so gradually. And you know, the devil is so crafty that you can fall on a show, fall in love with a show, and that show will move from Thursday at 7 o'clock to Sunday at 11 o'clock in the morning to make sure you don't come to church. The devil is so crafty. The devil will come in and move things. And, and, and exactly. Well, I, I used to go to, let me tell you, uh, this, I'm, I'm just confession time here. I, I, I used to struggle to keep prayer night on Tuesday. Because all the best TV shows seem to come on Tuesday night. And, and it's like, hmm, man, you know, I wonder if I could just, you know, me move this thing on a Wednesday. Or, or move this thing on a Thursday. But you know, no matter when I move it, the devil will move it also. Uh -huh. the, the devil will, will make something else intriguing for that day. And then after we started the Tuesday night prayer meeting, here comes the devil. Uh, Optimum Cable has just announced we're going to give two free movie tickets to any movie you want to see on Tuesday night. I was like, man, I love watching movies. But I love also when it's free. <laughs> Ain't nothing better than a free movie. Praise God. If it's free, it's for me. That's my, that's my motto in the past. If it's free, it's for me. But, you know, we have to constantly stay on guard and stay on vigil yes, because our flesh loves the world. Yes, amen. Our flesh loves the world. Now, not many preachers will tell you that they like television or, or, or watching movies. Oh, my, I'm so holy. I watched movies in 1975, and, and I ain't got no television set. What's a TV? To the devil, you know, when I was, and I, I just read the Bible all day long. and. <laughs> But let's, let's be real, okay? The, the, and there are other things that we fight with. There are other things that our flesh desires. Remember, not everything in the world is evil. Now, there's a lot of evil in the world. That's easy to spot. That's easy to see. That's easy to be on guard for. You know, late night, 1 o'clock in the morning, Ray Ray ringing your phone, saying, what you doing? <laughs> Nothing. You want to get some coffee? Yeah, okay. Well, come on over to my house. I just made, I got some Starbucks coffee and, and it's the, oh, you need to come on over to taste this coffee. And, and, you know, we can see that stuff coming a mile away, okay? But it's, it's the things of the world that don't seem that all that wrong or all that bad. And for the most part, they're not. But we just got to be careful and on guard not to love the world. Amen. Now, look at the results of this that happens. It says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, this is a, a heavy thing. Jesus said, no man, I'm going to use another, another color marker. No man can serve what? Two masters. Okay, you, you can't have two masters. You cannot have two lovers. I mean, in the flesh you can. But not when it comes to God. God is not going to be your side lover. He's not going to be your side master. God is not going to tolerate being second place in your life. Remember the book of Romans chapter 1. It says because they would not serve God nor honor God that God turned them over. God is not going to be second place in your life. God doesn't play, you know, I'm going to be your side God. When the world, when the world assumes the spot that used to belong to God, God says, go ahead with your lover. Go ahead with your lover. Now the heavy thing is you don't lose your salvation because we're in covenant with God. But you lose your relationship. You lose your relationship. And then Jesus says, what would a man give in exchange for the world? What would you give in exchange for the world? Would you give your God? Would you give your God up that you could gain the world? Many believers would. Hello. You know, I once thought about writing this, this uh, book to be made into a movie, to be made into a TV show to be made in a Hollywood star with my name on it one day, but maybe not really. But, um, you know, it goes like this. We are so caught up in prosperity that we have made God an ATM slash genie. 
right? We made God an ATM slash genie. That's, that's, that's what you hear a lot on TV, a lot in a lot of churches, that God will give you the desires of your heart. So if you desire uh, some money, if you desire some clothes, you desire a, a, a spouse, you desire this, God's going to give it to you. Rub the magic Bible and out will pop a miracle. Okay. Now I thought it would be so easy for the devil to just take advantage of this. If the devil would just pop up, and then he, and then somebody came and says, "I want to preach to you the gospel of John, John." And they would have say, "If you ask anything in the name of John, John, it will happen." Now, I just, 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 just bear with me for a second. Now, imagine that somebody were to come into a mega church or a micro church like this, and say that you know, in the name of John, John, and things happen. I'm telling you. Watch this. In the name of John John, I want, I want a nice big old cheese pizza with extra cheese and pepperoni. And then here comes somebody from the local pizza shop or Domino's walking in the church exactly as it happened. A lot of people are like, wow! That's amazing! And I guarantee you, people would start preaching the gospel of John John. Mm -hmm. And you have Christians that would say, in the name of Jesus in John John. And then eventually in the name of John John. Because every time we pray to John John, man, something happens. I was praying in John John's name last night that I would have a new car. And guess what? Wow. The man from the dealership rolled up out of nowhere, gave me keys, so that I don't have to pay a single car note. It's full of gas and be blessing John John's name. Mm. How fast would that spread across the world? Mm. Very fast. <laughs> Again, what would we give in exchange for our souls? What would we give in exchange for Jesus? We have to always be on guard because idols work the same way. Idols work the exact same way. A lot of idols we put in our lives that come from the world, this idolatry, even though it's positive things, we love it because it does something for us. You know, we may fall in love with, um, sis, how are you? God bless you. We may fall in love with the latest fashion. Okay, let's get real. And we go out and we pay $800 for a nice outfit we got on. But what do we get out of that? Ooh, look at him. Look at her. Oh, man. Wow, look at that. We get that attention that we crave. We get the approval of other people. Every single time we make an idol in our lives, it actually works to do something for you. Am I making sense on that? Yes, yes. So we've got to always be on guard that we are not making something number one and then the love of God the Father will leave us. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Now that sounds contrary to everything that we've heard and talked about. Because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. But if you love the world, the love of God the Father is not in you. That's not my word, it's the word of God. We got to really be on guard against this thing. It's me against the world. It is me against the world. Amen. Now look at verse 16. And John says, Why would you want to exchange the love of God for the love of the world? Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world is these three things. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All you are getting and giving and exchanging is you're leaving love and you are getting lust. <clears throat> My God. <clears throat> Catch that for a second. The, you know the world doesn't love you. Mm -hmm. Amen. The world is not your friend. Amen. It wasn't your friend before you got saved. It's even more now not your friend after you got saved. I know that. Okay? Amen. The thief comes to steal, to kill, that we're killed to make you a sacrifice for the devil. I don't want to be a sacrifice for the devil and to destroy. So the world offers you the lust, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Every time we say that word lust, we think of a sexual connotation like, mm, I'm lusting after this woman, I'm lusting after that man, I'm lusting after that cheesecake or whatever we want to lust after. But lust really means the desire. The only thing you get out of the world is you get the desires of your flesh. You get the desires of your eyes. 
and you get that proudful boasting or that arrogant uh, 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 declaration that you have achieved something in life. Mm. You know, I, I fight that a lot. Thinking, what have I really done with my life? What have I really done to accomplish something in this world? What will anybody remember me by in this life? That is not the Father talking. That is my flesh Amen. talking. Yeah. That is the prideful yeah. boasting of life. My real question should be, what have I done for God? Amen. Amen. Have I done the will of God in my life? Have I lived according to the way that God wanted me to live for yes. life? Have I been His hands? Have I been His feet? Have I been His mouth? Have I been his yes, body? Amen. Have I done what he yes, has called yes. me to do? Or am I so preoccupied with myself mm. that I'm caught up in the love of the world? Yes. It doesn't happen instantly. It happens gradually. 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 For all that the world is offering you is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. That's why Adam and Eve fell. Lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes. It looked good for fruit. That's a bad looking mango. Or whatever kind of fruit it was. That's a bad looking pomegranate, apple, banana, cherry, whatever it was. Man, it looked good. You see a fruit look very good? That one looked better. And they said, it's going to make me wise. That was their flesh. It's going to make me like God. That was their pride. That was their pride. The devil used the same carrot for each and every one of us. You know why? Because if, 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 if the best of us, Adam and Eve, could fall, then what hope do we have? Oh, boy. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank yes. God for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because if it wasn't for Jesus, we would always be falling every day for these three things, these three temptations. We would bow our knees to it. It would be an idol to us. But Jesus Christ set us free from all of the lusts of the world. Amen. It says this is not of the Father, but is of the world. Again, it is me against the world. You know, we are not to get so comfortable in everything that we're doing mm -hmm. that we get complacent where we are. You know, I, I, again, some true talk. I used to always say, Lord, I don't want to be a missionary. Mm -mm. If I am, I don't want to go overseas, okay? I, I want to be a missionary, maybe my own neighborhood, maybe a missionary to the mall, you know, mm. praise God, go out to the mall and evangelize, or, or a missionary to, to Six Flags Great Adventure, go out and, yeah. and ride the roller coaster and preach about Jesus. You know, but God, don't send me to a third world country where they got uh, uh, cockroaches the size of bats, they got mosquitoes, they got all kind of things, they don't have any soft beds, they have no TV. What will I do without TV? Oh, Lord. Mm. I didn't realize it. But if those are your reasons why you don't want to go, you have fallen in like and Amen. maybe even in need with the world. Yes. Just, just analyze it for a second. Yeah, yes. it, 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 you know, a, a lot of times we want to pick the destination as if being a missionary is for somebody else. You know, missionaries are at an all-time low number in the world. Yes. There are less missionaries now than ever in the history of the church. There are missionaries who are out on the field who want to be there that got to come home because the churches have stopped giving. That's because right. we are so caught up right. in getting a new color TV and getting a Amen. new outfit Amen. and getting some yeah. new Jordans and getting a new car and some a new raise, a yes. new promotion that we are more concerned with ourselves than we are with the kingdom of God. But Jesus says, seek ye first. first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. World War me. It's me against the world. Look at verse 17. The word says, the world passeth away and the lust thereof. Why do I want to go on a train that's headed off a cliff? Why do I want to wait until the very last minute to jump off of that train? You get me on that? The, the, the world is, is symbolically heading toward a cliff of destruction and it's literally heading toward the lake of fire. Why do I want to enjoy the ride to wait to the very end to maybe jump off? I'm going to get off now because the world is passing away. The lust thereof. But look what the Bible says. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Amen. Forever. What do we give in exchange for our soul? Nothing. 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 Go back to John chapter 10 one more time and we're going to 
close out with this. Look at verse 17 again. Jesus says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. The, the Father loves me because I'm giving my all in this. The word life is what really? Soul. It is suke. I, I'm giving my soul. I am giving my all. You know, a lot of times we think that by giving our all to God, that we will get nothing out of it again. But there is a resurrection. Amen. There is a better side. Amen. And Jesus yes. says, I am not afraid. And it's, like, it's like he's the, the Bible calls him the prototype. Okay? The first. He's the, the prototype. He is the new Adam that is leading in a new direction. He says, I'm giving my all my soul into it, and I will get my soul back again. He says the same thing to you. Don't be ashamed to put your all into the kingdom of God and leave nothing for yourself and nothing for the world. You will not lose anything. You will gain everything. Amen. Too many times we want one foot in the church and one foot in the world because we're afraid we're going to miss out on something on this planet but if you give your life and soul completely to God and his agenda and his will he says you get it back again Amen. Amen. you never lose you only win Amen. That's right. and this is part one of I hope a three part series world war me it's me against the world in Jesus name be blessed Amen, Amen. Amen. Amen.